What's good, YouTube birds and YouTube bets? This is JB Sports back again with another one. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, the backbone of the family, the mothers, giving a gentle touch, loving kindness, taking care of their children, looking out for their husbands, looking out for their parents in their golden years. A shout out to all mothers all over the world. Happy Mother's Day. Let's talk a little boxing. Canelo Alvarez was defeated last night. He moved up to 175 for the second time and came up shorter than a midget on his knees as he got dominated, dismantled, dissected like a frog in biology class as he succumbed to the WBA light heavyweight champion. Dimitri Bilbo. Bilbo won this fight off the jab. Everything was predicated off the jab. He was able to use the jab. He was able to double up on the jab. He was able to use that jab to set up his right hand. Right hand is his most lethal shot, but his best weapon is his jab. And he was able to control distance. He was able to basically have opponent in Canelo Alvarez and looking for one shot. I don't know what happened to Canelo Alvarez's jab. He used a beautiful jab in a Daniel Jacobs fight, but for some reason, maybe for the time, he left his jab at home as he was looking for the one hitter quitter and he was unable to land that money shot. Looking for one shot. And when you load up on shots, and a lot of times you're going to take a lot of gas out the gas tank. And that's exactly what happened. As when you load up on shots and you're not landing, you're not doing too much else besides looking for that one shot. He was able to get outpointed over a 12 round fight by Demetri Bilbo. Bilbo fought a beautiful fight. He fought exactly the same way Triple G fought in the second fight. But the difference was he had an opponent in Canelo Alvarez that was looking for one shot. The thing about Canelo Alvarez in the second Triple G fight, he was throwing combinations. He wasn't just looking for one shot. He was looking for the one two and he was throwing shots with mean intention, but he just wasn't looking for the single shot like he was looking for in the Bilbo fight. So that leads me to believe that he's not the same fighter. Or he was a guy that was believing in his own hype. That he was a guy that could hit a guy on the elbow and and damage his elbow tendon and stuff like that and beat, beat him down and stuff like that. What he did with the Callum Smith fight. Maybe he was a guy that believed in his own hype. I tend to believe that he's a guy that that's looking for a fight at a certain pace. He's not a guy that's looking to fight round by round at a breakneck pace. And that's one thing that Bilbo did. Be Bilbo sped up his uh, speed clock. He did a good job of speeding the fight up, fighting at a tempo that Canelo was not comfortable at. That's why you saw Canelo drop his hands a lot of times and kind of do the little head movement and you know, lay on the ropes and stuff like that. He couldn't keep up with the pace that Demetri Bilbo was putting on in this fight. So we will see what happens and we will see what transpires. But Demetri Bilbo put on a beautiful display. Now I'm hearing that it is a rematch clause in the contract is yet to be seen if Canelo Alvarez will implement the rematch clause. If I was advising Canelo Alvarez, I would tell him not to implement the rematch clause. I'd tell him to go into a Triple G trilogy. Fight Triple G, that's a winnable fight. Win that fight, maybe take on a John Ryder in December and wait on the uh, Light heavyweight division to come undisputed. Let Bilbo take on the winner of Better BF versus Joe Smith. Let that happen. And then uh, Bilbo fight the winner of that. And the winner of that, you fight at 175. You need to fight for all the marbles. You ain't a guy that can campaign at 175 pounds. you like, oh, I'm going to come undisputed. I'm going to beat Bilbo and I'm going to beat the winner of Better BF and Joe Smith. Nah, 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 nah. That's not the situation that you need to be a, a part of. That's not the road that you need to travel down. Canelo Alvarez. Let the dust settle at 175. Take care of your business at 168 with Triple G and John Ryder. Win those two fights and then you wait for one guy to collect all the belts at 175. If it's Bilbo, then at least when you fight Bilbo, you fight for all the marbles. If it's better BF or Joe Smith, you fight those guys. Those are better opponents for you. That's, that's a better opportunity for you to win than a Bilbo. Bilbo is just all wrong for you. Bilbo, like I said, he just like Triple G. But the problem with uh you is you're not the same fighter that fought Triple G in the second fight. Now, if you can recapture that magic and let your hands go a little bit more, 
like you did in the second fight, then it's a much, much closer, and it's a much more competitive fight. Not to say that you're going to win a fight, but you got dominated in this fight. You know, miss me with the judges' score cards, 115, 113. Now, I did a prediction video. I said that Canelo was going to win the fight seven rounds of five. I thought it was going to be a competitive fight. I was one of the few guys that got on YouTube saying it was going to be a competitive fight. A lot of people thought this was going to be a whitewash. People thought that uh, Canelo chose Bill for a reason, that Canelo would easily win this fight. He would figure him out and then break him down and probably stop him late. I didn't subscribe to those pronostications. I did not subscribe to those predictions. I subscribed to my prediction that Bibble was a real deal. He was a good fighter. I seen Bibble fight a lot of fights. Only thing that I had with Bibble was I was like, okay, he's a guy that's very repetitive. He wins one way. If Canelo Alvarez solves that way of fighting that he brings to the table, will he be able to go to plan B? But he didn't have to go to plan B. He beat him with plan B. Hey, some guys like a Chris Paul in basketball, you be like, okay, I know he's going to go right. But can I stop him from going right? Can I make him go on left? And he's been doing throughout his illustrious NBA Hall of Fame career, and opponents have not been able to stop him from going right. Same thing with James Harden. You know he's going to go left. He likes to go left. You're going to like, okay, I'm going to force him right. But the guy is averaging 30 points throughout his NBA career. He's a no doubt about it Hall of Fame fighter. So it's one thing to say I got to stop this guy from doing it, but it's another thing to actually go out and do it. So... That's, that's the case with uh, Demetri Bibble. Until an opponent can make him switch up from plan A, they're not going to be able to beat Demetri Bibble. And we're looking at one of the best fighters in boxing, Canelo Alvarez. He wasn't able to do it. Now, Canelo Alvarez is a guy, in my opinion, is on the back nine of his career. I think you get another guy a little bit more versatile, another guy that's a little bit more active, say uh, David Benavidez, uh, even uh, Jermail Charlo. Maybe they might bring a little bit more dimension to the table than a guy looking to load up on one shot. That was a problem with Canelo Alvarez. Another thing, like I said, Canelo Alvarez left the jab at home. I don't know why he did not use the jab to the body to close the distance to kind of stifle Demetrius Bibble's movement. Again, I thought he was a guy that believed in his own hype, or maybe he's a guy that it's not the same fighter he was in the second Triple G fight. He's a guy that's got to load up on shots, moving up in weights. Maybe that played a part in his lack of punch output. So we will see what happens. And we will see what transpires. Let me know your thoughts on this particular matchup. Let me know who you like in the Bivol versus Better BF Joe Smith fight. I like Bivol in that matchup. I think he is the best fighter at 175 pounds. I think Better BF and him will be a 50-50 fight. But I just like the versatility of Bivol. And I think he's a more fresher fighter. But would put it past Better BF beating them guy, breaking them down. He's a more... Harder hitter than uh, Canelo Alvarez at 175. He's a guy that's going to let his hands go. He's not going to be looking to land one shot. He's he's a guy that doesn't get the credit he's at it, that he's due as a boxer slash puncher. He thinks he's just a puncher slash brawler. He's a guy that's got a high boxing IQ. He knows how to set up his shots. He knows how to cut the, cut the ring off, and he knows to cut the ring off in a defensive responsibility type of way. So we will see what happens, and we'll see what, see what transpires. Let me know your thoughts about Canelo Alvarez getting beat decisively by Demetri Bilbo. Let me know your thoughts about Canelo Alvarez. Do you think he should get another trainer? That's the one thing I was thinking about watching the fight. I was like, man, he might need another trainer. I'm not saying get rid of Eddie Reynoso. I'm just saying, saying bring another set of eyes to the training camp. Bring another guy that's a little bit more versatility on the offensive end of the uh, boxing. Bring in an offensive minded assistant trainer to go along with Eddie Reynoso. Eddie Reynoso is a multi-time trainer of the year, so I'm not saying get rid of him. I'm just saying, add to your team. Sean Porter added to his team. He had his father training him. Then he brought in Hunter as an assistant trainer. He put on one of his best performances in a loss against uh, Earl Spence Jr. So I think uh, Camel Arias need to be looking to do the same thing. Maybe bring in a Robert Garcia. Maybe bring in Ismael, the guy that trained uh, Miguel Cotto. Maybe bring in another set of eyes. Joe Diaz. I gotta give you a shout out. When I saw Joe Diaz walking with uh, Demetri Bivol into the ring as he was getting ready to fight Canelo Alvarez. I was like, ah, oh, man, that's the same guy that's trained Gitterman. Man, it's going to be a, definitely going to be another L that Demetri Bivol is going to take and another L for a fighter trained by Joel Diaz. But Joel Diaz learned from that Gitterman fight. You got to give him credit. Obviously, he watched a lot of film of Canelo Alvarez. They implemented the same style that Triple G implemented in the second fight. And one thing they did with a... Uh, with a... Uh, Canelo Alvarez, 
that Triple G didn't do was they sat down on more of their shots. They sat down on more of their shots. Triple G was fighting off the back foot, but he was hitting a lot of shots. But for a guy that's known as a power puncher, he was throwing a lot of arm shots to uh, Triple G, I mean to uh, Canelo Alvarez. There's a lot of shots to keep you off me type of shots. There weren't no shots to do damage. The shots that Demetri Bibble was throwing was damaging shots, was shots to get your respect, shots to let you know that I'm here to win. And that was the difference between Demetri Bibble and Triple G. Let me know your thoughts about this epic, one of the biggest upsets of 2022, Demetri Bilbo defeating Canelo Alvarez via unanimous decision. Let me know your thoughts on what Canelo Alvarez should do next. I don't think he should implement the rematch clause to take on Demetri Bilbo next. I think he should go straight into the Triple G trilogy, win that fight, and then fight John Ryder in December, win that fight, and let the 175 undisputed play out. Tell Bivol, hey, okay, go fight the winner of Joe Smith versus Arthur Better B. That fight's going to take place June 18th. And then the winner of that, I'll take on for all the marbles at 175 and look to enhance my legacy and put me down as the greats of the greats. One of the all time, in my opinion, top 20 fighters of all time. Let me know your thoughts. Follow me on Twitter, JB Sports 3303. Like, share, and subscribe to JB Sports. The man, the myth, the legend, and I holler.